Welcome to the Tandem Talk Show, where we help women dial in their nutrition and fitness so that they can lose fat, tone up, and transform their lives. And now your host from Tandem Nutrition, Coach G. Yo, hey, what is up, everyone? Hey, it's Coach G here back again with a brand new episode of the Tandem Talk Show. I'm so, so excited for this new episode. If you're new here, this is uh, this is the number one podcast for women who are wanting to lose body fat, tone up, and achieve their goals in a healthy and sustainable way. And today, we have a very special guest, one of our very own tone up clients. Uh, with us today, her name is Beth Chamowski. Beth, how are you doing today? I'm good, doing well, doing really well. Happy hey. it's Friday! <laughs> yes, yes, I am so excited. It's Friday as well. I mean, I've been looking forward to our podcast for the last few weeks as well. You know, you've had such an amazing journey throughout your program uh, here at Tandem. I just want to get you on because you've achieved some amazing progress, and not only that, but you know, you've overcome some obstacles that I feel like would have derailed any other uh, normal dieter. But before we get into that, Beth, I'd love for you to just share with us today. I know I know quite a bit about you, but maybe yeah. talk to, uh, explain to our audience today you know, who you are and maybe talk to us about like what the dieting process was like for you before you started your program here at Tandem. Yeah. So I guess not going too far back, but I like grew up, I was really into sports, loved running, was always extremely active. Um, but as I got older and I stopped playing sports, I feel like that was the time for me to try to reflect and figure out like, how can I find nutrition and a mix of working out and trying to kind of navigate that, not having my coaches with my sports who could kind of help me. Mm -hmm. um, so I've um, kind of tried a lot of things, I should say, like, from doing Whole30, that was something I really liked, but it was hard. It wasn't sustainable for me and my lifestyle to continue to do like long term. It was great. Mm -hmm. I got good results, but I've been constantly as I'm doing these diets, whether it's elimination diets to try to cut out um, different food that I think can help benefit me a little bit better or working out hours on end and running like a crazy person trying to stay in shape that way. I couldn't find something that was really like a long-term sustainable thing that I could continue to do when I hit my forties or my fifties mm. and my body cannot do crazy amounts of running or um, the workout that I felt like I needed to do to mm. stay healthy. Mm -hmm. um, so until I found tandem, I feel like it was hard for me to kind of figure out how can I bring things in with the crazy busy lifestyle I live um, I have a little dog who may pop up in the video. Um, I just got engaged. So I've got a wedding I'm planning. I've got a busy job that I'm working a lot as a consultant traveling. Um, I'm in wedding season. So I've got a ton of friends who are getting married and a lot of family travel and things like that. So awesome. tried to find something that I can sustain all that in, which Absolutely. is not easy. Hundred so. percent, and that's one of the things that stuck out to me early on was like you have a very busy life. You're about to get engaged. You have a dog. You work quite a bit. You travel a lot. And one thing that really impressed me, Beth, was like you joined our program, and you didn't want to put this off despite being like really busy. You were like, "Hey, I'm gonna take action on this, and I'm gonna go for it despite all these obstacles and trips that I have." You know what made you decide like now's the time to do this versus wait, wait until like maybe you're you know, schedule freed up a little bit. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because me and my coach took a little while to figure out when I'd start because I was on the road a lot. Like that's hard to start a new routine when you're not in your home or in a place where you can cook and plan and do all of that. Um, but yeah, so that was something that was really challenging for me to kind of mm -hmm. navigate and figure out. Um, but we just, we waited for a week that I was home where I could have like 10 days to say, okay, Here's the new habit. But really mm -hmm. after that, I had been go, go, go. So mm -hmm. I just knew I wanted to make a change. I knew that I was had that motivation and drive to try mm -hmm. to like make my results happen. Yeah. And so that was something I just was like, there's never going to be a good time to do mm -hmm. it, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be waiting years. If 100%. I 
Yeah. I, and I definitely understand that because I think a lot of people just wait until they feel like the time is perfect, but there's yeah. no perfect time. And you're a great example of just take, taking action when the time may not be perfect. And it sounds like you know you and your coach talked about a good starting time. And then you had some time at home for like you know, 10, 15 days before you got in a groove of the habits that you guys set, set uh, kind of set together. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, we did. And then I mean, that's something that like I'll talk about throughout this of just like, how do you work on taking care of yourself, whether it's working out nutrition, just getting those habits, even when you're on the go. Mm. Tell us about that. What advice would you give to someone who is on the go quite a bit and who is trying to stay on track? And how did specifically did your coach help you with that? Yeah. So I think um, the obstacles I faced, I feel like I, me and my coach, like, talk through like I feel like I tackled a lot of obstacles that not everyone experiences through this or if they do honestly it's great because you've got someone who's they're motivating you encouraging you holding you accountable which I think helps like if you're busy and you don't have the time sorry my dog is like getting <laughs> excited over here um but it's I mean it's hard to kind of have that you need that accountability so I think having a coach and having someone like that is super helpful in addition to um like not only having your coach, but having those small goals, like you Mm. can't have everything change every single week and it can't just change immediately. You do need to kind of focus on those small goals and doing that with anything in life, just saying, Mm. Hey, I'm going to try to hit my protein goal today or stay in my calorie range or prepare for the busy times. (laughs) Those are things that you kind of focus on. Mm. Love that. You know, I think when a lot of people think about accountability, they think of like, maybe just like touching base uh, once a month or maybe once every other week. If, if someone was kind of curious about like what your accountability experience was like, what would you tell them? I feel like mine was kind of unique in a way because I was very transparent with my coach about like how I was feeling and where I needed motivation, where I needed encouragement. And so I feel like the biggest thing with this program is I was able to talk to my coach or talk about when I was struggling, when I had a lot going on, Mm -hmm. um, they were letting me know that I could email them or text them and ask questions and try to find ways when I'm sick and I don't feel well because I got sick in the middle of the program. Um, how do like, how do I make little wins or take care of myself in a way? So I I think that. that. Holding that account, like having that accountability, knowing that someone's there and will be there every step of the way through challenges, that's helpful in every way in life. But especially as you're trying to focus on like weight loss and toning up and kind of changing that lifestyle. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you felt comfortable reaching out to your coach and getting the support as you did, because you know many people don't realize this, but like the reason why we're named Tandem Nutrition is because that's one of our biggest passions is working very closely one-on-one in tandem with our clients. And yeah. you know, throughout your busy schedule, I'm so glad you had your coach. By the way, big shout out to Coach Boston for doing such a great job coaching Beth throughout her, her program. And um, so, and I'm so glad you had a great experience with him and I'm excited for you to continue on with now coach Keith uh, as you transition throughout the rest of your program. But if you had to nail down Beth, maybe three of the top benefits of having a coach and how having a coach helped you accelerate your fat loss progress, what would those three or top three benefits be? Yeah. So I feel like I kind of touched a little bit on like accountability and motivation. I think that was helpful. Like that's probably my Mm. biggest thing because I am a very like, I'm very mentally tough on myself. Like I have high standards for myself. So that was something to kind of help me like get in the right mindset and kind of help have someone who can talk me through that. So Boston definitely gave me a few pep talks when I was feeling down or felt like I wasn't making the progress I wanted. Um, The other thing is like learning. That was something Mm. when I started this program, I am a constant learner. I want to learn and figure out like, why are things working the way they are? It's probably because I'm like a coder at heart. I do like technology coding. So maybe that's where it comes from. But that was something I wanted. I wanted to take away from this program. I wanted Mm -hmm. to learn why my data was a certain way. Why was I weighing a certain weight on the scale or why were my inches a little different based on like things I was doing throughout my life. So I feel like that was a huge one, like learning. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the last thing I feel like I was 
I went through 12 weeks. So I guess that's another thing. I went through 12 weeks and I'm going to continue, but I do feel like I have the toolkit and this is something mm -hmm. I really wanted a toolkit to be able to like make these good habits. Mm -hmm. And so now when I'm going to dinner with friends or I have a family vacation, I'm thinking about how I'm preparing myself in different ways and knowing if I don't, what did I learn of how it's going to affect my body and what I need to do to kind of get back on track. So really mm -hmm. it's learning and then also like forming those good habits. Like yeah. that's, that's really what it is. Like you want to mm -hmm. form good habits. So it becomes a lifestyle change rather than just a diet. You know, that, that makes me so happy to hear because like that's, you know, one of our big focuses is really teaching our clients how to lose body fat in a healthy and sustainable way and really give you the tools that you need for lifelong success. So I'm so glad to hear you say that. And especially as you transition throughout your fat loss, pro fat loss program and into your metabolic reset phase, I know that you'll even learn even more how to sustain the results that you've gotten as well. And I'd love to ask you, what was your progress? I know that you mentioned before you joined the program, you tried Whole30 and a couple other diets. What was your progress like before your program and what's your progress been like the, these past 12 weeks? Yeah. So I feel like when I did other diets, like I did make progress. Like I could definitely sit there and say like, wow, I feel like I lost a certain amount or I felt like I lost inches or my face looked thinner, like the kind of typical things you would say. But after I was done with that diet, it's how do you continue after it? And I think that was the hard part. I felt like I'd go back and then have to try something new to kind of continue to sustain. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did on other ones for this. Like, I feel like I've slowly seen a lot of progress week after week. I think sometimes with the whole 30, I felt like I saw more progress in a month, but I was doing different things to my body. I wasn't going on a vacation or a bachelorette party or things where like those just set you back or I couldn't do because the diet limited me. Um, so my progress where I'm at right now from where I started, I've lost, I think 11 or 12 pounds in the three months. And I was someone who like kind of stayed at the same weight always. And it was hard yeah. for me to like get past three pounds or five pounds. So definitely made a lot of progress there. Um, and then I also feel like for inches, like you can tell my, in my face, you can tell on how I look and even really just the confidence that I have. Like, I think that was something like pounds and inches are one thing, but it's also like, how do you feel about your body? How do you feel in your own skin? That's something that's the most important. And I knew I wanted to improve a ton on, um, for that confidence. I love that. And you losing 11 and 12 pounds in 12 weeks through all that you have that, that is amazing progress, especially dropping the inches. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure you lost more body fat than that. Um, with the muscle mass you put on, I know that you are a, such a very hard worker when it comes to working out and being active. So I'm really impressed by the progress you've made and how consistent you've been throughout the challenges and obstacles you faced as well. So that is, that is awesome. And I'm sure there's a lot of people here today listening that, you know, maybe new to like our specific dieting approach or maybe the, the strategies that we use. What, what advice would you get if you had to start this whole dieting process all over again and do it differently in a way that, you know, would give you results? What would you what would you do differently? Um, I think the biggest thing and I did do this, but I wish I did it a little bit more is ask questions. Like if you're not sure and you're like, I'm curious or you feel like you have something that's stopping you from achieving those goals, ask questions because all the coaches um, that I've worked with and experienced with in this program have a lot of answers. They'll be able to work with you and not just answer it, but give you more information to help you continue to grow and yeah get that knowledge bank because at the end of the day, you're trying to make that lifestyle change with this program, right. ideally, or that's how I look at it. Um, and learning is going to put you in the best success to yeah. then make those choices and be able to make it easier to sustain, even when you go through challenges. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is patience. Like I <laughs> am a go, go, go person. I have a lot going on. Like I would love to lose 10 pounds overnight. Like I feel like everybody would like, hopefully most people relate to that because if you didn't have to do anything and it would just all fall away, like that would be great or lose yeah. a certain amount of inches. But I think the patience and knowing that life happens and that's something coach Boston kept telling me when I'd have 
a weekend going to New York with friends and we ate out all the time. And I was like, man, I wish I did things differently. And he's like, but did you have fun? Did you enjoy yourself? Like, are you proud of the decisions you made? And it's really thinking about more than just the pounds, the goals you have each week. It's how do you live your life, enjoy the things that you want to enjoy and not feel like you're missing out. Um, And then being kind to yourself as you work through Uh bouncing back. And I think my goal was a pound a week is what we had talked about at the very beginning. I hit that. And Mm -hmm. it was something where I didn't feel like I had to not be able to go out to dinner with friends or have to eat like lettuce and whatever. Like, you know, I got to eat stuff off the menu that I would talk to my coach and say, Hey, here's where I'm going to. Here's the list of like what the menu is. What are some good options that I can fit in my goals, whether it's through my protein or staying at a good point with my carbs and fat and making sure I can make a good decision to not set me back as much as Mm. I would think. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of advice, but I think like for sure patience and just being kind to yourself because it's a process, like Mm. it's not going to happen overnight and I'm still going to continue my process and I'm excited about it. But going into like my next phase of this, I want to make sure I'm more patient and kind to myself, because that's going to help you achieve your goals a lot easier. Mm, 100%. And you know, I'm so glad that you felt comfortable, like going out to eat and just keeping your social life, because I feel like so many people start a diet and they feel like they have to give up like going out to eat and drinking wine or, you know, giving up their favorite foods. And I'm so glad that that you reach out to Coach Boston to get advice on, hey, like, here's a menu. What can Mm -hmm. I get from this menu to help me stay on track with my goals? Because I feel like, People think that they have to stick with eating a salad or, you know, um, stick with eating, eat, not eating. Like I was that guy years ago where I thought I had to like, I could not eat when I went to a yeah. restaurant. And I'm so glad you had this experience where you're living your life and you're learning through yeah. this process of, hey, this is how I track my calories before I go, you know, out to eat, to stay on track. So that's awesome. I'm so glad that, you know, yeah. you've learned. And I love how you're a student and a heart who always wants to learn and get better and improve and you know, before our call, you mentioned having several coaches in other areas of your life. So it yeah. uh, makes sense that you've hired someone in this area to help you really become a master with sure. dieting in this process together. Yeah. And I think too, like the way I think about things a little differently is it, I always was like, okay, how can I stay in my calorie goal? Like, cause I feel like a lot of diets, that's what you think about. But I also think about what calories are going to set me up for success to make my body work more efficiently. So that's something like now I find myself being like, okay, what can I get the most protein out of? Or what can I do that's going to like fuel my body in a way to give me more energy to make me feel better that I know is going to help my body versus like, don't get me wrong, love eating a cheeseburger, love (laughs) eating like chicken tenders and all of that. But I want to think about, well, maybe if I have a burger, maybe I take away the bun because is that calories I need? And I can Mm. wrap it and let it, you know, finding ways to like, make sure that your calories not only are in that goal, but they're working effectively with your body Mm. to make sure you're, you're, we're kind of like machines that need a lot of different nutrients to help Mm. us. And it's kind of like, you need to, you need to feed yourself the right stuff to make your body work. And the best Mm. that's, that's that's kind of the mindset I've, I feel like I've kind of grown and I see it every day, even when I'm like, what do I want for lunch today? Like it's become ingrained in my head that that's the process I'm following, not just what's in the fridge kind of thing. Love that. That's I, I can can imagine how that shaped your food choices, as you mentioned, also the meals you have. And I love how you're focused on getting not only high protein meals in and high protein foods, but also other foods can help you get in the nutrients that you need to feel your best, to yeah. perform your best. And I mean, you're a high level performer at work too. So having energy and mental clarity is so important. And I can imagine how, you know, even seeing the progress you have, have has helped you, uh, you know, with those areas as well. And, and also just improve your, your life in areas that maybe you maybe didn't think of before. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, like I keep talking about protein. That's something that I know we've talked about together. Like that was a really hard area for me. Like I, mm-hmm. Grew up in a family where my parents were vegan when I was born. Like we, protein was not really like you're eating chicken all the time and what you typically think. So we always found different ways to bring in protein. But when I started this, I was like, wow, I'm not eating a lot of protein. And I know that that's a goal that I need to focus on. So even like 12 weeks later, like 
I'm not perfect at that. Like that's something I'm constantly working on. I work from home. I sit at a desk all day and sometimes they're very long days, like 10 to 12 hours, depending on the day. Um, So steps are something I still struggle Mm -hmm. with. So there's always things like at the end of the day that I, yes, I've made this progress, but there's always going to be things that I'm trying to improve week by week. Like I think this week, mine was steps. Like I was Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to try to get my steps in. And if I can't get it during the week, I'm going to do a lot more over the weekend to make up, to get a good average at the end of the week. But if I'm making these results and I'm not perfect day in and day out, and I've got, I mean, I think it was like one after another weekend, which Boston can probably hopefully like laugh about this since he's like, so what's going on this weekend? Because it was like every weekend I had something going on or I was traveling or we had guests in town and we were eating out like, being able to do that and still see that progress, I think it's something to know that I'm investing in my health. Mm-hmm. And I know I've seen changes. They may not be as drastic as like you think they would be, but they're big changes, even though um, I'm not perfect. Like I'm not perfect through this whole program. And I'm proud to say I've made made changes without being yeah. perfect because sometimes you feel like you have to be perfect to mm-hmm. make big result changes. So. That's so good. Yes. I was posting on Instagram yesterday. You don't have to be extreme. You just have to be consistent. Yes. And that's one thing you did yes. so well at. And I love how you say giving yourself grace and being kind to yourself too. Because sometimes when we're when we think that we have to be perfect, we we lack that forgiveness for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we don't um we don't up give us permission to give ourselves grace. So I love how you said that. Yeah. One other quick question I do have, Beth, is you mentioned that I think I want to pull apart. You had said, hey, you know, throughout the week, I may not get in a lot of steps, but that weekly average is what I wanted to focus on. Tell us about that. And like if someone was listening and wasn't quite sure what that meant, what advice would you give them? So I think your average is going to be your best friend. I learned that through the program really quickly. So how you track things through this program is you'll have a spreadsheet and you'll have a bunch of different goals and you track every day. Like I know probably heard like you use my fitness pal and that kind of helps you track everything. Well, your average at the end of the day, like at the end of the week, that's where coach Boston would talk to me about. We'd look at averages and you'd say, maybe you had a day that you ate like 400 calories over your goal, or you did not walk very much, which sadly to say, like there were days when I was like, I didn't even hit 3000 steps, which for most people, like it seems like not a lot, but that to me, I'm like, that's a little, like my goal's 8,000 of every day and I'm hitting 3000. Like that's not good. But at the end of the day, we always looked at those averages. So like Mm. when you're going on a trip, there's ways that you can like do calorie borrowing or Mm. which I know we've had, there's podcasts all about that as well that we've kind of talked through or sessions, but it's really something that you can work to your benefit. Like you don't have to be perfect every single day of the week. You don't have to be perfect with your protein goal every single day. But for me, my goal was an average. Like what is my average each each week? That's a little easier for me to hit with trying to find a way to make up some days um, to see those results because that's the end of the day, kind of how Boston focused on things with me, Mm -hmm. um, your average. And that's such a great focus to have because there's some days you may be so busy that you may not be able to get in a lot, like 5,000 or 7,000 steps. And that keeps you focused. Like, Hey, I, maybe I need to work a little bit harder the next day or this coming a weekend to hit my average step goal. Or, you know, if you went on, I, have a, I had a client <clears throat> this morning, he said, Hey, I went, I went a little bit over my calories on Tuesday, but I made up for it the next couple of days by just cutting back a little bit. So his average, and it's so important if you're not tracking calories, definitely start there. And if you're not documenting your calories and knowing your average, I think it'd be a great starting point to knowing really it's okay to go over on calories. You're not messing up. You're not ruining your progress and you won't gain body fat just by going over your calories one day because it's that weekly calorie average. As you know, it takes 3,500 calories above your maintenance to gain one pound of body fat. And it's pretty difficult to do that. But if you Mm -hmm. try hard enough, I'm sure it can happen. But looking at those averages really gives you more insight, like how close you are with being 3,500 calories above maintenance. So thank you for sharing that, Beth. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And there was, and I'm probably over here smiling as you're saying that because there was one weekend where I like had a bachelorette and I couldn't, I was having a hard time like tracking everything. And I estimated what I had because sometimes it's a little harder when you're eating out and you're not in your normal routine. And I was like, oh no, I was probably way over. Like what's going to happen? And 
coach Boston was like, it's okay. Like, he's like, this is how much you need to eat over to gotcha. gain that back. And I was like, Oh, that's okay. <laughs> like you feel a little bit more grace. It kind of helps you put in perspective of the hard work. If you continue to stay um, diligent with it, like mm-hmm. that's going to help you. And it's going to be hard to bounce back once you start realizing, like for me, sometimes my, um, my calorie deficit that I focus on mm-hmm. is feels like I have to eat a lot some days. And some days I'm like, I can eat way over. And it's really yeah. just kind of making those choices and kind mm-hmm. of understanding like what mm-hmm. can get you where you need to be. Absolutely. Especially as you're preparing for a fun weekend, like having a bachelorette party or going to like a wedding, you know, knowing how you can calorie borrow can get you ready for a fun event without, without being yeah. anxious or worried about, Oh, I'm dieting. I can't have all these foods or you can, you should have, you plan ahead and prepare for that. So Beth, our interview has been awesome today. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. I, my very last question is if someone today was on the fence about, you know, having a coach to help them with their fat loss goals, what advice would you give them? Um, well, I, my biggest advice that I kind of go through without life is if you can, because I know money can be a big factor in everything, but you want to invest in things that are going to make you better. So mm-hmm. for me, my health and well being is a huge part of how I do everything in life. So I feel like if it's financially, take a look at breaking it down day by day. I did that the other day when I was looking at just some expenses and Think about you giving yourself X amount each day towards your well-being. That's going to set you for those goals. I think if financially, look at it in that perspective because it's always important to invest in yourself, whether it's in any aspect. So I feel like that's something I would tell people is I'm glad that that didn't stop me. And I did think about it that way. I said, I'm investing in myself. Um, And the other thing that I constantly think about is having a coach who can be there for you and help you Mm -hmm. learn when I was doing other diets, I spent so much time researching, looking things up, trying to like see the new fab and all of that. When you have a coach who's done a program like this, that they know works for a lot of individuals and can kind of teach you and show you that the convenience of that is huge. And if you're a constant learner, it's going to start becoming muscle memory for Mm -hmm. you. So I feel like that's something too, is think about like, the investment you're going to put in yourself with this and what you can gain and learn. And then there's also a community like dieting is hard by yourself or with a buddy or trying to figure it out. There's a whole community that you can share recipes. You can learn a lot of things to make dieting convenient and easy, honestly, because that's where I feel like now I'm at. I feel like this was a very convenient. I didn't feel like I was doing a ton to get the results I needed compared mm. to what I've done with other diets. Oh, wow. Fantastic. So, I yeah. love that. So investing yourself in your health is always a great investment, as Beth says. And you know what? I love it too. The fact that there's always, you're always spending something, either your time learning more about how many calories or macros you need, or your money having all the guesswork taken away from you. So Beth, I really appreciate you being on today. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. And I'm excited for you to transition throughout the rest of your program. And hopefully maybe once you're done, we can hop back on and talk about the rest of your program, the progress you made and where you've been throughout that part of your journey. Awesome. Yeah, no, that sounds great. And thanks for having me on the podcast. It's been fun and it's exciting to kind of share my story because it's hopefully will we'll relate to a lot of people. Um, Absolutely. As going through. So, yeah. 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 Well, thank you, Beth. And for anyone who wants to learn more about our Tone Up program, just comment Tone Up below. Let us know or DM me on Instagram at Tana Nutrition, and I'll reach out to you and see if you're a great fit or fit for our program. So thank you again, Beth. And I hope everyone has an amazing day today, and I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Tandem Talk Show. If you're enjoying the podcast, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time.